I'm Jasper Powell Esguera. So my nickname Jepe is actually from the initials of my name. So JPE Jepe. Uh, high school, I'm from Philippine Science. Uh, before that, I am from a private school, a law scholar. Uh, have struggles in science, but uh, thankfully through PSI, must harness or nurture yung science skills ko. And then, uh, as I remember when I was first year, I had a lot of catching up to do. I mean, you, you know, when you get into PSI, parang, kasi when you're elementary, parang you're on top of your class, etc. But you go to PSI, it's just like, oh, lahat kayo matatalino, then a lot of catching up to do in science. And I really thought I, I'd never catch up, no? So, thankfully, was able to catch up then uh, graduated uh, second, I think, uh, yeah, second in, back in 2008. And then I took the uh, chemical engineering in college. So in college, medyo no start uh, academics, academics lang. No? So kasi ganun sa Pisay, parang you just need to like survive the quarter, get passing grades. But when I got into college in UP, so parang mas maraming opportunities na na come up. So I became student council uh, representative when I was in third year, then eventually a uh, college organization president when I was in my fifth year, uh, organization of chemical engineering students. Uh, then also managed to graduate uh, still in 2013. And then uh, when I graduated, uh, didn't work first. I uh, had to take the boards. so. Six or seven months ago, I work. Uh, took the boards November 2013, then got my first to work at Shell December 2013. So, a little bit of my career. So, just stayed five months in Shell. <laughs> Not a good thing to do. So, parang kumbaga, the cardinal sense of your first job, like you, you need to stay like longer than six months and not go away. Na wala kang lilipatan. Those are things mm-hmm. that I didn't do. And then afterwards, uh, so after five months I left, I can discuss later on why I left then. Some three months of unemployment, then entered renewable energy in, through Aboitis. So I joined the biofuels business of Aboitis in July of 2014, which transitioned to a biomass energy company in 2015. Closed in 2018, and uh, then moved to another biomass company, so parang sadista. Mm-hmm. You might have the option of being traumatized of, you know, if things don't work out the first time, wag mong gawin ulit. Because, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Retrenchment, it's quite. Kasi parang, feeling mo. <laughs> parang kung masasaktan ka ulit, napaka unstable na naman yung career mo. But, mm-hmm. anyway, you chose to do a biomass work again under an Ayala uh, company naman. So, still, <laughs> still standing strong. Uh, in 2017, of course, yeah, standish wrong. Eh? <laughs> so 2017, uh, <clears throat> along the way, when because I wanted to renewable energy advocate and stuff, I eh? had this goal like a 500 megawatts contribution. So in a boy, I just got 8.8. So <laughs> it's like 491 megawatts to go as of uh, start of 2018. So 2017, I thought of, I thought of like, uh, I should start teaching. You know, when you start teaching renewable energy in college, it's like another avenue where you can spread the word about it. And then you can encourage like your future students to go into this field as well. Because, uh, you know, renewable energy is not a mainstream uh, career path for uh, chemical engineers. So they're still going to oil and gas, you know, the more lucrative jobs. So like if I, if I happen to sway some of them, go to renewable energy then that can possibly count to my 500 men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. It's so tax. I, yeah. So <laughs> Reap some dividends along the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've been teaching for three years. I just got, I just paused for a while because uh, I'm taking my master's. Uh, eventually, because they might not allow people or uh, teachers who don't have a master's degree to teach anymore in UP. So, yeah, I'm currently taking my master's. So that's, it, I think, yeah. Okay, I know. Uh, you're a certified financial analyst. Yeah, yeah. So, along the way... Uh, <laughs> along the way, wow. yeah, no? <laughs> Who does that <laughs> along the way? <laughs> <laughs> I, I start, uh, when I started my career in 2014, so I'm a chemical engineer, right? So, yeah. Because uh, when you're in a team, na parang, of course, you're COO, CFOs, they're like business-minded people, and mm-hmm. they don't really 
kumbaga, if it's from an engineer na parang hindi masyadong magaling magsalita or parang pili nila hindi naiintindihan yung business side of things, uh, parang hindi ka masyadong napapakinggan. So, I actually took it upon myself na to do continuous learning, like starting off, I think, 2015, just a manager's course in UP. And then, so I got like an intro to accounting then. Then, 2016, I took a diploma in finance, corporate finance from Ateneo uh, Professional Schools. And then, Uh, 2017 to 2019, I decided to like embark na fully into a finance role. Pero like, uh, still an engineer. So, snap will know na <laughs> yung work ko, sa work ko currently sa Biopower is a hodgepodge of things. Like, minsan yeah. I practice. Yeah. So, 2017 to 2019, got, uh, got my CFA. So, passed all the levels na and just uh, fulfilling the number of work years required to get the pinaka-title of a chartered financial analyst. Wow, that's a that's a very impressive uh, resume. How old are you? How old are you? Are you? <laughs> just so that there's context. Yeah, I'm 28. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I told you he was wild. I told you. Okay, Jope, I, I you know I'm very very impressed, but I'm even more curious. What drives you? Like it seems you've been driven since you were young. Like what's has your drive? Um, been a, in a constant trajectory or has it been like shifting, shuffling a bit? But how maybe you can um, expound on the drive that fuels you until now. I think it's about the context then of my family. So both my parents, no? so my grandparents are farmers. So they're both uh, rice farmers, both sides. No? So parang laki sila sa hirap ba? So mm-hmm. I really appreciate na my parents uh tried to get me into private school uh, in elementary. So, medyo may rapin for them. But I got naman, uh, like, uh, tuition fee discounts as a consistent honor student. So, parang, kubaga, uh, it's also recognizing na we came from a relatively poor background but now middle class na. And then, uh, luckily, 10 years, ba? 10 or 9? 9 years kasi ng education ko is free. So, free education is I four years and free education UP for five years because I got an, a scholarship. No? So parang uh, hindi ko alam if it's just sa mga uh, state-funded uh, schools na parang ini-imbibe na dapat you have to give back. Mm. Uh, at the same time, you know, uh, <clears throat> may specific field kasi ngayon is biomass and it's also a way of giving tribute back to my grandparents. no? Mm-hmm. Especially my lolo passed away two years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, with biomass kasi you're uh, Kumbaga, part of the value chain is giving farmers additional source of income. So parang, kumbaga nandun yung strong sense of I'm not only helping other people, I know I'm also helping people na immediately parang close to who I am. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's, 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 that's super amazing. And I feel like, I'm curious though, um, like, with in term, you, clearly based on your credentials, you work hard. You have a good sense of work ethic. Um, but, You know, like I, I, I'm pers- in my personal experience with school, um, I felt like the, you know, the back-to-back classes, having curricular activities, it sort of just helps shape you become a person that can handle the pressures of a job, of daily life. Um, was it the same thing with you to translate from high school, college, or did it start changing in terms of um, your approach to work, your, your ethics towards it? Be uh, mental health, caring for your um, your body as well. Yeah. So, uh, what I realized, uh, kapag kasi wala ka masyadong ginagawa, <laughs> parang maraming tumatakbo sa isip mo, di ba? So, parang mm-hmm. I also try to fill in as much as activities as possible. Uh, like, no high school, hindi ganun because uh, sobrang daming akad work. But in college, nabigyan ka na rin ng chance. Eh. Like, uh, I think uh, another motivation din kasi when I was in college, the college org that I was part of, we really do uh, community works then. So parang uh, you really want to give back to these communities ba? Yeah, I can yeah. see later on kung paano siya ganun. And about the work ethics then, yeah, it's really about filling in the time. Like I remember, di ba, I shared earlier, I left cell 2013 and wala akong work for some few months. Snap, I think na kwento ko to kay Snap that I was really big. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, like 200 pounds before. Damn, wow. 
So I also took it upon myself to actually improve not just on my mental, emotional health, but also physical health then. So yeah, mm-hmm. the work ethic talaga, I mean, it's something that you sustain. And ang maganda kasi when you consistently do hard work, when there's an obstacle down the road, you just refer to your previous accomplishments. So like, uh, like for me now, uh, you know, the pandemic's been difficult. Yeah. I just remember that, you know, I've been through worse times. Like, as I've said, yung when I was retrenched, when I lost my job 2018, I still get to keep my job now. So parang, it also builds on your character when, when you take on more and more challenges. No, oh, I love that. I love that. I think uh, that's, that's so, I think that's one of those things that when we're young, a lot of old people tell us, work hard, develop your values. And parang, I think with me, I rejected that because I thought na, nah, that's for when you're, you want to be serious in life. But I think that personally, I see it. Eh? Like if you do something over and over and over, always at a very high um, uh, measure of uh, effort and perseverance and grit, parang it reflects talaga eh. It really shows eh. Parang, I don't know, like, but I guess with, uh, you seem to be very results-based, if that's safe to assume. Uh, but when things are beyond your control, though, like, how do you, uh, I guess, how do you um, maneuver with situations like that? You know, life happens, not just with work, parang we're changing. Like, what are things that you can share about uh, these uh, defining experiences. Yes. So in, in 2017, 2018, turning point talaga yun, because uh, it's around the time na uh, our unit in Abortis was closing down. No? So that's totally out of my control. And uh, the backup plan that I did then was to apply for business schools. I think I've shared it yeah, yeah. with Snap as well. No? So in uh, applying for business schools, well, honestly, honestly, I initially nagturo ko sa UP also because it adds up to the uh, to the background. Eh. Parang it strengthens your profile for a postgrad course uh, internationally. So mm-hmm. I, just, I applied for an MBA, I think Harvard, Stanford. So parang obaga, it's my backup plan na when the company closes in because I was foreseeing that the company will close in 2018. My backup plan. And it didn't work. So it's out of my control. I mean, it's out of my control. Yeah, yeah. If, the, if the schools didn't see that I was qualified. No? And, you know, 2018 was a difficult time for me. And <laughs> that time I was with Snap in, uh, in the Ayala office at uh, Easy Energy. And yeah. what I really did was just take one day at a time. Just keep moving forward. I think what uh, what was important during the time of 2018, locked in na kasi ako with my CFA. I mean, uh, I already passed CFA level 1. So I might as well continue CFA level 2. Uh, things uh, parang ang hirap ngayon. And locked na rin ako with my teaching. Like, I have to continue teaching na because I'm uh, one of the faculty members na at UB. So parang just continue doing like kahit feeling mo wala pang direction. Mm-hmm. You know, this quote, this Steve job, so parang you can't uh, connect the dots moving forward because you can just connect them looking back. And very re- relevant yan eh, because when I, you know, I just got to teach and then eventually uh, each lang then uh, take CFA, parang kubaga uh, uh, increase your mastery in things that are in your control. Kaya parang hindi mo pa sure where it actually will lead you. Kasi parang wala ako during the time wala na ako plan. Kasi uh, di ako nakapalok sa MBA and parang feeling ko yun na yung backup plan ko. So what the backup to the backup? Just live. <laughs> so parang ganon. So parang and eventually the dots connected. Kasi ngayon uh, I'm able to do better at my work. Uh, with my experience in teaching. So, kumbaga, when you teach, kasi, parang you try to communicate, na, kumbaga, you find ways to communicate what you want to teach na may intindihan of your students. And now, I got yeah. to apply it at work. So, parang how to deal with your bosses. Na parang, oh, so parang, kaya, paano kaya nila mas maintindihan better in context ko? So, parang, I used my teaching then. And then, I just used the time then to, you know, my, the finance skills that I gained over the past two years are yeah. relevant to my work. So, parang when, no, no, when no, no, there are no. things that are out of your control, mm-hmm. yeah, it's yeah. really just about moving forward one day at a time kahit parang feeling mo wala kang pupunta. Because eventually, it will all make sense naman. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. That makes a lot of sense. Could you give us a short uh, kwento about how you got into renewable energy? Yeah, yeah. What, what really drives <laughs> you towards it? Yeah. 
again, sabi ko nga sa'yo, you, you can just connect the, back, the, the dots looking back. No? So, yung pinaka naisip ko talaga, uh, you know, the very village that I used to live in, in Quezon City, the street names are are names of power plants. So, parang, parang mind conditioning. Yeah, mind uh. conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> Then, uh, but, but seriously, uh, when I got into high school naman, my, uh, the, the areas or the science fields that uh, I became good at, mostly chemistry and physics talaga. So I got into chemical engineering. It's really used, chemical engineering is really used in power plants. So my thesis, mm-hmm. I am in <laughs> uh, energy thermal systems laboratory. My plant design was also in a renewable energy design. My internship is also in a geothermal plant uh, one by Chevron in Laguna. So parang kumbaga, sa state niya yung salaga na dala eh. Diyo ko lang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, into renewable energy. So my first job is in Shell. It's clearly not a renewable energy type of work. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just happened na I didn't get along well with my boss. It's the first time team leader then. So, hindi niya pa siya masyadong magaling mag-handle ng tao. And, uh, in 2013, kasi around the same time I was having my boards, Typhoon Yolanda hit the Philippines. No? So, Typhoon Yolanda affected Leyte. So, Leyte, especially Tacloban. Uh, one of the communities we visited, yung uh, college organization namin when I was a uh, fifth year. So, mm-hmm. We visited the community in Leyte. Palo, uh, just beside uh, Tacloban. So, they were also heavily affected by Yolanda. And you know, Yolanda is a result of climate change. And uh, when I got to ponder then, when I was thinking careers, dapat something na more, because you know, with Shell, what you're getting is like pera, diba? So, para, 2014, gusto ko naman, you know, something naman na I could uh, address some problems in society. So, I went, during the three-month period na wala kong work, medyo renewable energy companies talaga yung uh, in-applying ko. And it just happened by coincidence that one of my college professors became a consultant uh, for a boy. So, okay. that's how I got into the field. Uh, Biofuels pa kami nun, uh, but with the global oil price drop 2014, we transitioned to a biomass power company. So, and that's really out of control thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I said, you know, you know, speaking, because it's like how you got into renewable energy. So, it's a coincidental and stuff. But you're, I've completed six years now, so I'm going seven in RE. And it's a choice na. So, kumbaga, uh, There were offers along the way naman to shift into other industries or into a conglomerate or larger opportunities and something like that. But when you keep on choosing it, parang ano, feeling ko, siguro ito na talaga yung gusto kong gawin at least for the next five or ten years. Mm-hmm. Are, are you hopeful for the future? I mean, because I'd, I'd like to think people that work in renewable energy or, you know, like companies that do good are have belief in the the human race, I guess, to make things better, diba? But like, how about you personally? Do you, do you, do you see a, a hopeful future for the planet or for humanity? Well, at least in the Philippines, yes. So mm. the good thing with teaching is you also get to update your learnings every year. So parang kumbaga, uh, when I started work 2013, renewable energy law was just passed 2008. Implemented yeah. 2009, 2010. So it's a very young industry. You get to see the advances that happen every year. So, kumbaga, it's not uh, plateauing. Eh. When you just uh, tune into the news, you would see new investments coming. Uh, you, you would see, like, for yesterday, or the other day, Ayala said that they'll no longer go cold. They prioritizing renewable energies. So, kumbaga, the trajectory naman. So, nagkakaroon naman ng, kumbaga, sustainability conscience yung mga large companies now that they see the relevance of thinking more long-term. The problem kasi with climate change, you don't feel it na parang mabilis lang. Like, unlike the pandemic, di ba? Na parang bila na lang, a matter of months, the fold na yung world. Uh, with climate change, it's something long term. And good thing na marami na mga sustainability advisors na sa mga companies who are also uh, guiding the sea uh, levels to think more long term. Would you, I guess you would consider yourself cerebral, very logical when it comes to making decisions. But do you, have you heard of the term uh, synchronicities? 
like basically it's kind of like meaningful coincidences. Not really coincidence, but parent things are kind of aligned in the thing, the way life plays out. Would you would you believe in that, or do you think that we're more, you know, like it's it's really up to you. You may you whatever you do, whatever effort you put in life, uh, like you know the universe will give that to you if you work hard for it. But is there like a you think bigger things are at play? I think it's 50-50. So we had this activity in class, eh, na you have to choose, or like you have to place yourself if you subscribe into the belief that change is happening to you or you're making change happen. So in that activity, I actually stood at the middle. So I think uh, there are inevitably some things that you can't control na, as you said, parang synchronicity, like just the universe uh, diverting you into some places. Yeah. But if, if the universe diverts you into those places, when you haven't put in the effort to actually like uh, to actually grab the opportunity na ipe present ng uh, universe sa you, I think uh, hindi nsa mangyari. So parang fifty fifty talaga na you have to put in the effort. Kung kailan there's uh, there's another quote eh, parang uh, it's about like preparing yourself. Na kasi the universe can eventually pave the way na mag-provide ng good timing to make your aspirations come true. Ah. Yeah, no, I, that's a, I love that quote. That's a Paolo Coelho quote. Um, yeah, the whole universe will conspire to help you achieve your dream, di ba? Kung gusto mo talaga yun, pero <coughs> it's up to you rin kung gusto mo talaga gawin if you want to pursue it. Mm-hmm. So, um, I guess what I'm curious about is like with what's happening um now uh you know things are very challenging what is your uh philosophy in life in terms of what inspires you that keeps you going even in difficult times such as such as now yeah so uh, shared earlier nagyari lang talaga ako sa past experiences eh uh snap we do know pero talaga you know nothing's worse than uh being rich. <laughs> because yeah. when I was certain in 2018, I felt shit. So, like, I felt I was nobody. So, parang, uh, it's really, what keeps me going is my reliance on how I survived past incidents. Na, you know, I've been through some stormy episodes in my life, and I know I can get through. Uh, I, you know, when you get through a lot of difficulties, it's also a point for you to just reflect and be grateful as well with what you have. Because parang when you're in a state of chaos, parang people are naturally wired to think about the negative stuff. But if you just pause, you would actually feel grateful. Like for me, even if I'm, you know, the past uh, month since the quarantine, it's been difficult for me because I just moved out. <laughs> so, parang living alone is difficult for me. But uh, I still, I'm grateful because at least I have a unit to stay and uh, I still get to keep my job. Uh, I have not uh, contracted the, the disease even if I have to go out every day to get my food. So, there are things that you can be thankful for. Uh, you just have to balance just have the proper mindset na in among the things that you can't or amidst the things that you can't control ano ba yung pwede mo pang ipagpasalaman is this a that's that's amazing i love that that kind of mindset talaga but do you was this a mindset that you that um what do you call this that you've cultivated like throughout the years or like is it something na parang like like you said you always look back at the past so, parang, are you always constantly, okay, what are the insights from this situation? Yeah. Or when did you become aware? Yeah, when did you become self-aware? Because eh, that, 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 that requires a, a tremendous amount of um, self-awareness. self-awareness. Yeah. yeah. I, I started become self, becoming self-aware <laughs> 2014 when I left Shell. Because, you know, you have a lot of time in your hands. Ba? So, parang, three months unemployed, you're just by yourself. So, kung baga, uh, Doon ako nakapag-isip na uh, uh, ano ba yung dapat mindset ko moving forward. And uh, I also got to think, you know, I wasn't this mature. So there are enablers along the way. Uh, 
even if uh, Aboy T is uh, the trench near, was a stressful experience. Aboy T has actually a good uh, uh, training plan for its employees. Hindi lang siya technical. So parang, like for example, I learned like seven habits of highly effective people. Oh, us. wow. Yeah. Through a seminar na required by Aboy T. So it, uh, then there's a coaching, uh, parang coaching program where I was coached by uh, Carlos Aboitis, who para uh, one of the fifth gen Aboitis, and mm-hmm. in our sessions, he really taught me about uh, mindfulness. So he asked me to install Calm. It's an app, na parang, mm. uh, parang how to keep your peace. Like every morning, you just listen, like breathing exercises. Galing, so, galing. Meron siyang part na ikaw, meron din mm-hmm. siyang part talaga na may enablers din talaga yung environment mo. So yeah, very thankful talaga ako both of my Longer term employer, so I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I have to plug Ayala, apparently. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> but is it, it so? Is your, are you still continuing your meditator meditation practice until now? I said yes. So every morning, so instead of like uh, looking <laughs> to Facebook again when you wake up, so that yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I I I take some minutes to just uh, appreciate what I have, like parang peaceful minutes lang. And also, I keep a journal. You know, I, corny yan eh. Especially with guys, parang pili, what? what? But, 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 no, no, I, I keep a journal, man. It's, it's Nikki has a journal. <laughs> I have a journal. Has a journal. <laughs> We're sensitive guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The second guest we've had that asked, do you keep a journal, di ba? Yeah, yeah, or like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as in, it's actually not as uncommon as you'd think. People you know? just don't want to admit it, but we have journals. This, yeah, and this guy's like a 6'5 former PBA player that... Yeah, uh, the journals. You would not, <laughs> you would absolutely you. not think it. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. keep my journals. And, you know, uh shared ko nga kanina na it's about looking back. You know, just journals, I, I kept that since 2014. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, when you look back, na, oh, I've been through this. Oh, yeah. that's the immature Japan. <laughs> so, you <laughs> have things to laugh at. Uh, especially during times of stress. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Galing, galing. No, that's, I'm, I'm so glad that you write it. You still write in your journal and you're still meditating. I think that's, that's super cool. Eh? Parang I, I, that's, I've always wondered, talaga, eh? the ones, um, you know, my friends who are very cerebral, um, I always wonder how they. What, what keeps them grounded, what keeps them centered. And it's so nice to hear that, you know, you have a meditation practice, you, 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 you make time for gratitude for your body. Parang, you know, like I, I, it, it, it really sounds like you were molded in a way that was very multifaceted. Diba? Like give back to the community, be in a place where you can take care of your family, you know, where you come from. And I think like, I mean, honestly, like, the kids I meet, younger people, a lot of them, parang, they, they're so, and I don't blame them because the instant reward um, mentality. Mm-hmm. Uh, they want to be able to like be an influencer, make a lot of money by posting, or be a superstar, yeah. you know? And like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I mean, that's why talking to you is refreshing because parang, you know, like there are really a lot of people then that, that have that mindset na, I want to be a holistic person. I don't want to just be one person that's just career, 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 nothing else. But yeah, man, that's galing. Galing talaga. I think that's super, super cool. Feeling ko rin, it's, uh, about, it's also due to social media. Eh, na parang, you uh-huh. know, instead of like people investing in the longer term, uh, you get to compare yourselves kasi immediately when you just browse through Facebook. Eh. That's true. I always do that. I always do that. Yeah, same. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a reflection, eh? a, a digital reflection of who you were. And you can really see physical traits, your conversations, and you can kind of like process it. And then also get, uh, let's improve this, diba? Right? Yeah. And also, I think a lot of young people then, I think what they're having difficulty with, parang kaya hindi wired, ako kasi especially, I've been through this, parang hindi wired to take on a longer term journey. Like, mm. you you've heard na parang, you know, people or younger millennial employees, like for example, just stay a couple of years in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parang kumbaga, wala na dun yung view of longer term. So, yeah. mm-hmm. may lang siya to start. Kumari ako just recently, 
uh, I've also had questions eh. Like, uh, my renewable energy ko ngayon, di ba? And when I got into this master's program na uh, yung mga classmates ko, we're 16 na uh, iba't-ibang fields na parang well-driven. And iba-iba, yung ibang industries kasi, ibang fields, kumbaga, it's faster to get results. Like, for example, if you develop an app, it's very fast. Parang may tumawa, deploy mo in the span of one year. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. It, we know when you're in infrastructure, like energy, it, it really takes a long time. It takes a lot of patience, which a lot of people in our generation <laughs> doesn't have. <laughs> so parang sabi ko nga, uh, it, with, uh, with energy, matagal na yung gestation yan, kumbaga, b- before a project comes into fruition. Mm-hmm. Solar At least is a year to two. <laughs> yeah, solar is faster like one year, two years. Yeah. It's like biomass, it's like three, five years planning. Yeah. You just have to have a really strong sense of yourself. Na alam mm-hmm. mo ito talaga yung gusto mong i-commit into a long term. Kasi doubts will enter your mind uh, once in a while. Especially when you see people in your new speed na uh, they're accomplishing a lot with yeah. things in the industry. Yeah. So para you, you have along the way, you have to really know your why. Know your way. I love that. Yeah, I know your way. So, uh, what, what do you call this? I have. I'm gonna digress out of the seriousness of this conversation, which is really great, honestly. But like, what are your vices? Do you have any vices, guilty pleasures that you indulge in? Here, <laughs> <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> But Here. Then, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. happy to hear that. Happy to hear that. Yeah. Yung, isa, yung when we're having a uh, rubiki telecon uh, sa work, sasabi, may mga tanong every week na. So, yung one of the questions is, what do you look forward to after the quarantine? Sabi ko, I look forward to going back to Luna, the, the, the place in VGC, where I, can, where I get my favorite drink. No? Kasi, you know, I, kaya ko like 14 glasses. <laughs> so, parang, ah? I look forward, sabi, yeah. oh, wow. I look forward na makabalik sa'yo kahit every day for the first week. You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> I miss it. I'm nice. Have you been able to drink during the quarantine? Well, there are cities na hindi naman liquor ban. So, yeah, I think yeah. naka- hindi liquor. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. So, nakakainom pa. Nice. But di ba, Jepe, you're doing also this uh you're handling like a like a page that you made in Facebook, right? That uh that is kind of uh helping or helping inform people during this shift into renewable energy. Can you tell us something, a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, it's the Big Show page. So Big Show is actually an acronym for renewable. The B, B is for biomass, G is for geothermal, S is for solar, H is for hydro, O is for ocean, W is for wind. It's not an original uh, acronym. It's an acronym by the Department of Energy. So we started that page 2018. So it's a class started off as a class requirement in one of my uh, chemical engineering elective class. So you get to post their uh, stuff about renewable energy. Because there are many misconceptions. Pe. Like, parang, what are actually renewable energy technologies? How does it actually help? Uh, and with the way I discuss my class, you need to balance. Ka. You know, yung, Parang kasi feeling ng iba, renewable energy is like a, is a panacea and that, that will cure the climate change problem. So the page also informs both the positive and the negative sides of adopting uh, specific technologies. Yeah, like you have to be fair of mm. what challenges still are being faced by each technology. So it, has, it was continued last, uh, last, no, last semester. So napagpatuloy siya and we're uh, trying to not repeat contents. Because eh? the first year, the contents were really on the renewable energy technology. So last time, we uh, more of, we we contacted this uh, organization called Project Liwana. So they are providing a solar electrification solution for ATO communities. So uh, there's really been a lot of changes then with the way I handled my renewable energy course since three years na yan. Like, for example, the first year I taught it, uh, the focus is really on large infrastructures, you know, large uh, large shift uh, changes in our energy system. But last sem, uh, it's more of decentralization. It's more of uh, how renewable energy can tangibly help communities. So that's what I tried to emphasize last. Uh, 
since uh, baka part of this uh, podcast no so i think uh, some ateneo uh, uh, some ateneo graduates high school graduates are uh, also organizing some donation drives for these eight communities uh, of project liwanag kasi you know with the stop of the economy with the health because of the quarantine medyo mahirapan sila getting their uh, basic necessities so if you can donate <laughs> for sure no no for sure for sure so uh what do you call this Jope, for this um since you work in renewable energy what do you see in like the near future in terms of um how it's going to affect the, i guess the philippines na lang. like what what are, what are we going to see in the next few years in the next few years, there will be a lot of coal plants that will be stranded. So a lot of banks are no longer willing to finance coal projects. And the problem is there are a lot of coal plants that are still in development. So, you know, we have to process the signals very well from the, from the energy industry. Na, you know, Ayala stopping investments are there. So mm-hmm. you would see less and less investments in coal. That's my view, although some economists will have a different view. Uh, and then uh, you will see more and more solar. So solar is actually very cost competitive now. Uh, solar will still be leading the renewable energy growth over the next 10 years for the Philippines. Uh, what I also see is by 2030, we won't meet our uh, emission reduction targets unless we have a president elected in 2022 that's more supportive of the climate change commission so uh the thing is you have like you have a, you have a law created that uh institutionalized the climate change commission but uh, eventually it cannot execute its functions someone if it's not being supported so True. Yeah. yeah we we need some radical uh political change still uh someone who will understand the you know because with I, I don't blame our politicians to think short term. Eh. Mm. Uh, the, 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 the short term solution kasi talaga is to build more coal plants. I mean, it's the, ito na yung nakasanayan ba? It, you know, yeah. um, we, we, we're used to it. And, you know, people, they don't adopt to change very well, especially because it induces a lot of uncertainty. So, um, hopefully, in the future, there will be some institutional support, government institutional support, na clear to meeting the targets. Uh, kasi some people will argue Philippines naman ang taas taas na ng renewable energy capacity mo or renewable energy mix eh. but it's not the point you know Philippines is the seven most affected by climate change so if there's something or there's a country that should lead is seven out of 200 countries right so if there's something who, who should lead this movement na mag-mitigate sa climate change it should be the countries that are most affected yeah mm-hmm. and, and what are the I mean I've I have been following the news and, you know, like articles about climate change and its effects, but I do have a friend who works in the counts, climate change council of the Philippines, but I thought uh, the last time I talked to her was last year. And when I asked her about the situation, she was kind of like, it's not looking good. Uh, I'm sure you're up to date with what's happening since it's your industry. And so is it, what's, what are, what's to be expected like from the effects of climate change moving forward? Yeah, so because especially rising sea levels, diba? so we are an archipelagic country. So the the most that are really in danger are the LGUs na by the seaside. So we um may kita natin yan over the next ten years na probably you know yung kumbaga forced migration. Wow. Uh, people mm-hmm. will have to flee their uh, houses when the sea level continues to rise. And what I see is yes, the problem is uh it's also about communication. Like uh hindi kasi masyadong na-highlight very well what these scenarios actually look like. You know, uh, if we more or less visualize, like, kumbaga, there are uh, publicity and or publications that will, like, sabihin na this specific island or LGU will actually drown by this time. I think it will be more alarming. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and uh, we, if we also go into tra- the trajectory of uh, building still more coal plants, which is still uh, the norm now, uh, in the long run, kasi, it doesn't help in terms of uh, what they call resiliency and 
energy independence. So, uh, in the next five years, uh, you've heard probably of the Malampaya natural gas pipeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's depleting. Eh? So, it's an indigenous resource. So, it's something that uh, we're not reliant on sa other countries because it's ours. Uh, but with Malampaya decreasing and that's providing probably 30-something percent of Luzon's need, we will need to shift to other energy means. And what that means is more uh, geopolitical instability in terms of our energy mix. Because like with coal, uh, majority of the coal that we use in the country are actually imported. So every time there will be ge- geopolitical uh, uh, challenge yes. or something, yeah. you're actually affected. Because eh? it's uh, hindi mo ma stabilize your own economy. You know, energy is very vital. It's the it's a basic necessity because yun yun nasa mga uh, nasa mga walls natin, di ba? Yeah, yung yeah. you know, everything that we charge from. So kumbaga, all industries will be affected by energy. And if you don't uh, if you don't come up with a plan to make us more energy independent, mas may affected tayo, especially kita naman natin yung dynamics of different countries. And Sorry, I would have to again interject now. That's oh, where oh, renewable oh. energy uh, comes in because renewable energy, you're utilizing your own resource, you're utilizing, you're utilizing your own sunlight, your own water, your own wind, your own ally or something. It's something that's mm-hmm. and it's actually help, helping us build the immediate community. So there are actually a lot of, uh, <laughs> I, I hate to sound like parang sirang plaka. There are really a lot of benefits of renewable energy. It's just that it's not being communicated very well. But I, I totally agree with you. But also, I always wonder though, because there always seems to be like a, a lot of friction between um, big, especially multinational companies that have, you know, the bottom lines as their... Uh, driving force. So is there, I mean, I don't really know how to reconcile both ideas. Eh? Like one side wants money, one wants sustainability and being able to just create a better world. So is there a way for, is there a way to intersect these two opposing polarities or something's got to give? Yes. Uh, again, feeling ko it's about nakasanayan. Eh. So with my work, kasi uh, I've, I've had the chance of actually reviewing like costs and uh, you know with the geopolitical uh, instability and variability of like coal prices it's actually not good for companies to continue with coal because parang you can't manage your uh, PNL your profit and loss very well because it's like going up going down going up going down uh, it actually builds as well the resilience of your business when you're relying on uh, feedstock, a raw material that's more in your control. So it's really like a radical change in mindset. Na it's really about uh, the attitude of companies towards change. Eh? And there are large companies who are handling it very well, like Shell. They have now embraced the fact that oil and gas is not the future. So they have built, uh, they have built a, a new, like a new energy business division in their European headquarters. Yeah. Who's really looking into how they can. Uh, position shell better. Yeah. Um, but, uh, how can prepare for electric? Uh, yeah. Right? yeah, because uh, you have these capacities. <laughs> eh. Ang sinasabi ko nga, you, you have these company capabilities that will not go to waste man. Like for example, mm-hmm. if you're a coal company who's specializing in logistics, if you convert to biomass, those logistics know-how will still be valuable. So, yeah, yeah it's really about the, it's really about the tone from the top na you're going for this change. And not making excuses na porque ito na yung nakasanayan natin. Because uh, there are also a lot of economic studies na uh, with the concept of people bottom line, like profit, the planet, and people. You're actually uh, giving uh, or harnessing more value in terms of this triple bottom line. When you go to RE, because you employ more people and because you have... Uh, uh, better uh, carbon footprint or uh, environmental impact. All of those things. No, I, lo- I love that. I love the triple bottom line. I know I've know i heard that a couple of times, but I really like that idea. I just wish that more people would do it because I, I really think that, I mean, you know, sometimes you can't help but connect it to the pandemic that's happening now, Parang people not living sustainably, a lot of waste, excess, and, you know, like, 
I, I'm hoping this might be the wake up call. Do you think it might be the wake up call for like companies and people who are like very attached to that old um, way of thinking? Yes, definitely. Because you see, you know, uh, the, dem- the sudden drop in demand is actually putting a lot of businesses na baka hindi na sila mag-stabilize. Uh, Kumbaga, you shouldn't really be relying on overconsumption as a means of growing your business. Uh, and also, aside from the pandemic, uh, slowly uh, but surely, the financial institutions din naman are putting some things in place. Like for example, uh, this year, 2020, for the past financial year, all public listed companies are actually required to submit a sustainability report. So, oh, uh, wow. then, yeah. Then, uh, then in back in 2015, 2016, there's actually a survey that shows Filipinos love companies that are more sustainable. So when you have better transparency on companies, on the way they are sustainably, uh, on, on how they are sustainably operating these businesses, it will eventually affect their bottom line then. Because, you know, if people will have visibility now on which company is sustainable, which is not, and with Filipinos loving the more sustainable ones, then it will be a loss for those who will not transition into more sustainable practices. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, Snap, what else do you have in... Uh... Mm, so, in summary, maybe you could uh, share something for the people who are younger than us that are listening on how they can also align their dreams with what they're doing, like how you did. With renewable energy, it doesn't have to be specific, just general. Yeah, think first and foremost, just be good, in all sense of the word. Uh, this is from a movie. Yes, na puro puro quotes talaga yung. Oh, ilan yun? Oh, ilan yun? Mas okay yun. May reference. Oh, multiple quotes. There's a movie in 2013. Eh, parang it's a John Lloyd movie. You know, you know, people are driven to become better and better that they forget just to be good. You know, you, you can be good. You can be a good student. You can be a good uh, good worker, a good uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. But at the end of the day, are you a good person? Especially uh, what I realized uh, along the way, what makes you driven then is when you're able to empathize well with other people. Eh? Mm-hmm. So, if wala dun yung basic na kaya mong maging mabuting tao, kaya mong makarelate how things will impact not just you, but also other people. Then parang mahirap to take off yung kung paano ka magpa-find ng inspiration. Kasi for me, yung source of inspiration na sarili lang, parang siya yung pinaka ineffective. Kasi hindi talaga ang mga sagol kapag kumari, kumbaga sa sarili mo, ano yung pinaka-inspiration mo or something. Like, I'm not looking for, like, a house or something. It's really about a larger social change that I want. Eh? So, if you're not empathetic, if you do not uh, know how to position yourself in other people's shoes, parang mayroon siyang gawin. So, parang start empathizing. That's probably uh, one of the recommendations that I have. Uh, and then, uh, also just to keep moving forward. Uh, a lot to say of people nowadays are not able to handle fail- failures very well. Uh, ako, honestly, yan yung naging one of my dilemmas in 2014 when I left my job at Shell. You know, parang, uh, sabi, ilalagay ko naman sa Facebook ko na left job na kasi baka people will say, shucks, wala siyang trabaho. So, you know, in a lot of those judgments. And, uh, but I still changed my profile to left down. <laughs> anyway, so, it's really a balance of, you know, it's not just the successes that you need to celebrate. You need to celebrate both your success and failure. Because, kung maria ko, my resilience now is born not, of, not out of my success, but out of my failures in life. So, parang, you also tend to appreciate the successes and the things that you have eventually when there are failures that you experience. Like, failures on losing your job, failures on uh, not having an immediate job after work or yeah and uh, what do I say just trust your gut you know sabi nga ni Steve just trust your gut just trust your karma or something that you can trust na 
your life will actually be fruitful. Na your efforts will not go into waste. Kasi with my experience, uh, your immediate efforts don't give immediate results. You really have to wait out. And I now have the benefit of doing this for seven years. So, kumbaga, hindi ko siya masasabi <laughs> three or four years ago kasi parang walang credibility. But really, uh, the small investments that I make every day, like just taking time to exercise, taking time to reflect, uh, taking time to be grateful, I've, I'm reaping the dividends now. So, kumbaga, just really have to start small, start with what you can control, and just keep on doing those, kahit hindi immediate yung result. Galing, Don't galing. fall into self-gratification or something. You know? Results galing. are not easy. Yep, listen up, kids. This is advice that you gotta right? do. And this guy's legit. He's not like <laughs> and some... You're, and you're 28. <laughs> you're 28. Yeah, exactly. That's the highlight, 28. Exactly. 28. Yeah. Jope, thanks so much, man. Thanks so much for your yeah, time. Thanks for thanks for joining us, Jope. Thank you. I like the conversation. You know, I, I really like conversing now to people because yeah, I've been <laughs> more than a month alone. So. Yeah, cabin <laughs> fever, man. I, I try to have as much social interaction. You need it. It's it's it's, it's healthy. Just the like one last question, Jope. Quick question, lang. Go go go. go. Zodiac sign. Pisces. Wow! <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 birthday mo? March 9, March 9. Dude, I'm March 8. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but that's, yeah, you are a Pisces. Very altruistic. You know, like selfless. Galing nun, galing nun. Happy to meet another Pisces. <laughs> I also believe in Zodiac signs. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's good, 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 good. Same. <laughs>